Hey guys, welcome back to Pop 'em Up Chem, and we're carrying on with acids and bases. We're here for strong and weak acids and bases. Comment below, like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Please share the video, channel, and all the other stuff I've been making. You've got your links in the description. You've got your timestamps. You know where you are. It's time to hit it. This video is not going to be too long because I'm going to be sending you off to do some stuff by yourself. Let's get down to it. In this lesson, then, we're going to be looking at the difference between strong and weak acids and bases. We're going to do some definitions, and then you're going to compare and contrast some of the properties of these. First things first, here's a little refresh to get things started. Pause the video here so you can give that a go. Okay, guys, hopefully you realized here you're using your dilution factor equation. You've got 100 centimeters cubed as the initial amount. So you're going to do 100 divided by that added to the amount you're adding, which is 900. That's 100 over 1000, which is 1 over 10. Therefore, we have a 1 to 10 dilution factor. Now, the question isn't asking us that, though. The question is asking us, what's the pH going to be? Well, we're going to reduce the OH concentration by 10 times. So what are we going to do? we're going to lower the pH by one. Remember, it's a logarithmic scale. So the answer is, of course, going to be C. OK, we got to get some definitions and some characteristics out of the way. Strong acids and bases. This is what we're used to. HA goes to H plus and A minus. No equilibrium. Examples of this HCl, H2SO4, nitric acid. Now, we assume with strong acids and bases, full dissociation. That means all of the HCl here gets turned into H plus and Cl minus. That is the fundamental characteristic of the strong acids and bases. They all have weak conjugate bases. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's have a look at Cl. Cl doesn't want to react with H+. It's already dissociated from a strong acid. That means that these are not going to participate in acid-base reactions. And once they've dissociated, the Cl- isn't going to react with H+, or OH-. That's what we mean when we say a weak conjugate base. Now, the same thing is true when we look at our strong bases. If we take BOH as a representation, it's going to break down into B+, and OH-. Again, Examples of this are your group one hydroxides. Going to break down fully and we're going to assume full dissociation. That's the characteristic of our strong acids and bases, full dissociation. Can you take a guess at what kind of conjugates we're going to have? That's right. Strong bases are going to have weak conjugate acids. Let's have a little look. Na plus. Na plus is not going to react with OH minus or H+, it's not going to participate in those things because it's already dissociated from a strong base. It's already given that up. And so it won't participate in acid-base reactions. We're going to look at this more when we do salt hydrolysis. So what about weak acids and bases? Well, just as full dissociation was characteristic before, we're now going to have the characteristic of partial dissociation. These are all going to form equilibria. Things like ethanoic acid is going to break down in to ethanoate ions and H+, but the equilibrium is going to lie very much to the left-hand side, and we're only going to have partial dissociation. What do we think might happen with their conjugates then? Well, considering the conjugates are quite happy to lie on the left-hand side of the equation, that means they have, these have strong conjugate bases, so ethanoate ions do exhibit acid-base behavior. They will react with H+, and they will form ethanoic acid. Weak bases, very similar. We're still going to break down into B+, and OH-, but again, the equilibrium is going to lie to the left-hand side. So things like ammonia are classic examples of this. Yes, ammonia does want to accept that proton from water, but this equilibrium is very much going to lie to the left-hand side, and again, it's going to have that partial dissociation. That's the characteristic of weak bases. 
prizes for guessing then weak bases are going to have strong conjugate acids that means the nh4 its conjugate acid is very happy to give up that extra proton and so therefore it does participate in acid base reactions just to summarize that then strong acids bases full dissociation weak acids bases partial dissociation strong acids strong bases weak conjugates weak acids weak bases strong conjugates okay time to test you out then first question define a strong acid pause the video if you need to pop them up hopefully you mentioned full dissociation here next question Write the equation for the dissociation of potassium hydroxide and comment on how this equation shows if it's strong or weak. Pause the video if you need some time. Pop them up. Hopefully you got the equation here, but you also mentioned how that arrow indicates complete dissociation. That's what we're really looking for here. Have a go at a similar question, but for ethanoic acid. Pause the video and give yourself some time. Pop them up. Hopefully, here you had the equilibrium sign. That's the ticket, partial dissociation. Okay, now usually I'd get you to do a practical here. However, we're on lockdown. So the things you need to understand are the relationship between electrical conductivity, relative reaction time, pH, pH change with dilution, and neutralizing volumes of alkali comparing strong and weak acids and bases. So instead of doing a practical, you're going to go to this website here, which is a simulation. A link will be in the description below. And then you're gonna answer some questions for your understanding. So this is the page that you will be confronted with when you get to the website. So let's just break down what's actually here. In the top right hand corner, you can choose whether you have an acid or a base and you can choose the concentration, increasing or decreasing. As you go down this kind of side panel, you can also choose the strength so you can have weaker or stronger. So you're controlling the extent of the dissociation. Just below that, you can also decide whether you want the solvent to be included so you can kind of see the relative amount of solvent that is in your reaction. And lastly, once you come to the bottom of the toolbar, you have these other tools. So you have the pH uh, kind of dipstick, which will tell you the pH. You also have the uh, conductivity and pH paper, which will tell you the color that it would turn with a universal indicator. So that's the kind of system that you're going to be using and then you can use that to answer the questions on page 62 for your strong and weak acids and bases practical in your practical booklet okay guys just to summarize once you've done that you're still going to want to do more questions as well thanks so much for watching comment down below like subscribe hit the bell icon share the video and the channel and check out our other stuff please and remember practice makes slightly better